Mr. Diaz, I understand you have already discussed the warp drive failure with Ambassador Spock? I have. It is imperative that the Ambassador's shuttle be flight ready. I need you both to ascertain the root cause of the system failures he encountered. I'm surprised, Commander. I thought you would have wanted to work on Ambassador Spock's shuttle yourself. I respect the Ambassador and his many accomplishments, but I do not derive any satisfaction from interacting with his shuttle as if it were somehow transubstantiated through its association with him. Especially when I have the entirety of this starship to concern myself with. The Ambassador asked me to take a look, and I'm ready to crack this thing open. Good. You could learn from Mr. Diaz's focus. I'll take notes. Then I will leave you to it. Make note of any abnormalities in your report. Carry on. It seems like he's warming up to us. Yeah. Even Chovok has to look at that face and know you've earned some real respect. And I have to admit that I owe you one. You were right to make me go first. I don't know what I was thinking. You've pulled me out of trouble how many times? Call it even. Okay. At the very least, maybe I can track down that bottle of Saurian brandy you're still on the hook for. But first, we have work to do. Ready to go? All set. Let's run the diagnostic. So... I know about your talk with Miranda. You... you do? She sent me a Priority One dispatch right after your conversation. I'm happy for you. Both of you. <sighs> Thanks. But, I'm only going to tell you this once. Don't screw this up. Because I would be very unhappy if you tried this out and then, I don't know, six weeks or six days later, I have to start splitting holidays between the two of you. All because things went south and you're not on speaking terms. That just isn't gonna work for me. You really don't believe in me, huh? It's not you. Or her. Just running the numbers, and things don't work out more often than they do. I like my friends, and I like our group. I don't want to lose that. Is that thing done yet? Yeah, it's wrapping up. Let's see. The relays along the primary EPS are blown. The backup relays are all intact. An EPS overload from the warp drive could cause that. But how did the shuttle end up dead in the water? Huh. Well, maybe the ship's data recorder can tell us something. Here. They were only about eight minutes from their plotted warp point. No faults, just those warnings. What are they? Subspace variants out of tolerance. What does that mean? It means the main navigation array lost sight of space somehow. Will the array going offline cause that? Yes, but it should have also thrown a fault code. The warp field became inverted suddenly. I've seen this happen when the center warp coil cracks. A cracked warp coil throws a fault code. Still, we should take a look. There was a complete warp cascade failure. Wow. They're lucky the shuttle didn't turn inside out. Makes me think the computer panicked on the warp field equation. Any one of these failures should have thrown a fault. If it was caused by a system failure. None of this caused the relays to blow. Roll forward to when that happened. Yes, ma'am. So here, they take a moment to get their bearings and they attempt to re-engage the warp drive. There. That's the relays blowing. And look, there's another warp system alert. They're all the same. Subspace variants out of tolerance, or warp inversions. Finally, there's a complete warp cascade failure. Then it's one of two things. Either a warp coil is cracked, or the navigation array is offline. That makes sense. Divide and conquer. 
You want to check the warp coils or the navigation array? I'll check the other. Let's not overcomplicate this. One of these systems is likely broken. I'll check the nacelles for a cracked coil. I checked every coil on the port nacelle for imbalances. If any coil in either engine were cracked, I would have detected it. So, it must be the navigation array. Except it's not. Checked and double-checked. Well, the readings don't lie. Here comes the security detail for the way team. Hey. I'm not here. We're escorting the negotiating team to the surface as soon as they come down from the bridge. I don't want to interrupt some important work. I was just hoping to see you before I go. The captain and the others will be here any minute now. Should be an interesting ride down to the surface. Come on, I'm never too busy to make time for you. That's not true. <laughs> no. But I am glad you came by. Now that's more accurate. <laughs> I gotta be precise with you, huh? Hey, Maris. Aren't these those button pushers you're always hanging out with? And you're the phaser jockeys we always beat in Parisi squares, right? All aboard for Hotari! That another one of the captain's railroad things? <laughs> Gotta be. I just usually zone out by the time he gets to the whole, uh, steam engines were the warp drives of their day part. Catch y'all later. You don't want to miss your train. I do have to go. Not gonna lie, I'd rather not leave right now. More important things on my mind. Do me a favor. Come back safe. Deal. Be seeing you. It's Larda Diaz. If you could float back down to reality, we still have a ways to go. All right, where were we? So, the warp coils in the navigation array are fine, but the nav computer doesn't seem to think so. I'm out of ideas short of field stripping the shuttle from bow to stern. You wanna take this out of the shuttle and throw it on the bench? Oh, real hands on maintenance. I like it. <laughs> Okay, the nav computer is patched into the ship. The ship's computer can double-check our work. If the shuttle's nav computer is putting out false data, we'll know it. Let's run through the shuttle's logs again. Running now. Same. Warp field inversion and a cascade failure. However... The Resolute computer doesn't show the same subspace variant. We're in the same conditions that the shuttle was in when it failed. Why wouldn't the ship's computer get a matching result? What if the subspace variance was a momentary occurrence? That's a possibility, and it would explain why the simulation under our current sensor readings failed to reproduce the issue. But a subspace anomaly strong enough to cause a warp field collapse would leave graviton ripples for days. Let's run with the momentary subspace variance theory for now. Roll forward to the shuttle's attempt to re-engage the warp drive. We need the conditions of space around the shuttle at the moment of warp failure. Resuming simulation. Error in warp field calculation. Cochrane formula variables are out of range. That right there. Take the shuttle sensor data from that moment. Computer, why did the warp field calculation fail? Warp field pressure return non-orthogonal. Results are undefined. And that doesn't help. Wait, what if we use a different ship? Put the Resolute into the simulation instead of the shuttle. Yeah, it should warp just fine. Unless... Computer, run the simulation with the Resolute. Resolute simulated. 
Computer, give me manual control on the warp power. Static field intensity, warp 1.1. 1.2. 1.3. 1. Warp pressure is destabilizing. Error in warp field calculation. The warp drive has experienced a system-wide cascade failure. Warp field collapsed. Subspace variance is out of tolerance. Cochrane formula results are undefined. Bingo. Whato? The same moment when the shuttle failed to warp, so did the ship. Whatever happened to the shuttle just happened to us. The Resolute will not sustain war. We can't leave Hotari space. <laughs>